listening to another episode of In Moments Like These with David Graham. David is a speaker, author, businessman, former pastor, and founding director of Youth of a Mission, Montana. We believe that God is at work, constantly tugging at our hearts, working in and through relationship around us. Join us as we dive into a new devotional, as David shares a lifetime of personal moments and hopes to inspire you to see God the Father at work in your own moments. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of In Moments Like These. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust Him. Those are the first two verses from Psalm 91, one of my most favorite chapters in the entire Bible. And dear friend, I'm convinced that our Father in Heaven wanted you to hear those exact words today. It's so very good to be back in touch with you again after almost three months of being away on a time off. It was an important time off, but still, I missed those moments we have shared together. It would be fair of you to ask, what were you doing during this time off, David? Well, that's a good question. I was living in the shelter of the Most High. I was finding rest and protection under the care of our faithful Heavenly Father during some of the more challenging moments of my lifetime. The first of those moments began on a Tuesday morning in early July last year, when Kathy and I sat together in one of the exam rooms at my urologist's office. We were there waiting to see the results of a series of tests I had gone through over many weeks, when my very wonderful doctor walked part way into the room and then stopped abruptly. When I saw the sober look on her face, it was clear to me she didn't have the best of news. And the news was, David, you have prostate cancer. So, our journey began. More tests, more procedures, and some decision-making. And then finally in late November, I began two cancer treatments, one of which was radiation therapy that I was given every day, Monday through Friday, for six weeks straight, until ending in early January. And not long after beginning the treatments, the side effects began to kick in, a number of them, including severe weakness and frequent hot flashes. To those dear sisters who go through hot flashes every day, I have a huge new level of compassion for you. One of the more uncomfortable side effects is sometimes referred to as cancer fog or brain fog. It's when one just isn't clear-headed anymore. No comments here, Eric. Eric is my producer and my nephew. He claims to be my favorite nephew. And he would just love to comment about my clear-headedness. But I'm not going to let him. Now, back to being serious. During these past few months, I've found and stayed in my place of safety and rest. And it was an amazing experience. I've never, in any given time, learned more about our Heavenly Father. I have never felt His love and care so intensely as I have during these recent days and weeks in His shelter. If you ever have the opportunity, just ask my dear wife Kathy about our Father's shelter. She's been there. It was during the time that she went through a scary near-death experience. It was in April of 2010. It started early on a Friday morning when she told me she was having difficulty getting out of bed. Honey, she said, both my legs feel kind of numb. They've kept me awake for the last several hours. I helped her to her feet, and she very slowly hobbled into our bathroom. Both of us speculated that the numbness might be due to a lower back issue. Both of us were familiar with back issues. So after breakfast, I made an appointment with a local chiropractor who was available that same afternoon. So later that day, the good doctor spent nearly an hour with Kathy, and I was there with her. 
Unfortunately, she felt no improvement from his efforts. The doctor told us that if there was no change by the next morning, Saturday, to give him a call. Saturday morning came, and there was a big change, but not a good change. Kathy could barely feel her legs at all now, and could barely walk, and only with my help. We knew something was really wrong, and I immediately put a call into her primary health care doctor, who got back to us in only minutes. After Kathy saying only a few words to him, he interrupted her and said, Kathy, I want you to have David get you to the emergency room at the hospital immediately. I'll be there as soon as I can. Within 20 minutes, we were in the ER parking lot, and I was helping Kathy out of our car. She could hardly even shuffle now, and only with me hanging tightly onto her. Thankfully, a nurse saw us through the ER glass doors and rushed out to us with a wheelchair. In only minutes, Kathy was being examined by an ER doctor and another doctor, a neurologist, a specialist that deals with the nervous system. After asking some questions and then conducting some basic tests, the neurologist told us that he was going to do a spinal tap on Kathy to evaluate her spinal fluid. Sometime later, that was done, and Kathy was then wheeled upstairs to a hospital room where we would await the test results. I couldn't help but notice that the room she was put in was situated right next to the ICU, the intensive care unit. Though Kathy was strong through this, I was getting very concerned, especially because she was feeling the numbness moving further up into her upper body now, and she was now in horrible pain. It took some time before the lab report came back and the neurologist read it to us. Kathy had a rare autoimmune disease. Only one or two people out of 100,000 contract the disease every year. It's called guillain Array syndrome, named after two French physicians who identified it. It occurs when the immune system produces harmful antibodies that attack the nerves, and it's life-threatening. It can cause paralysis of the entire body, including paralysis of the diaphragm, which enables one to breathe. According to the doctor, the only hopefully effective treatment was for Kathy to intravenously receive donated blood that contained healthy antibodies, and as fast as possible. But it seemed like forever before the treatment got started, and all the while, she was clearly getting worse. Even after the treatment, her symptoms worsened. Our loving daughters, Michelle and Kimberly, who were with me until very late that night, were both shocked at their mother's continual decline. At one point, Kathy started having trouble speaking, and soon after that, only her left eyelid would fully close when she blinked. All we could do, of course, was pray. Finally, shortly after midnight, my dear exhausted Kathy was able to go to sleep with one eye half open. I told the girls to go home to their families. They did. And I finally fell asleep on a cot that was set up near Kathy's bed. It was a hard night, but the next morning brought with it some good news. The donated antibodies seemed to be doing their job, according to the doctors. The pain, paralysis, and great difficulty breathing was still there, but she wasn't getting worse. It would be a hard and long journey back, but Kathy would make it back. She and I would be sleeping next to each other in the hospital for almost six full weeks until... After a lot of care and aggressive therapy, she at last was able to use a walker on her own. And I was able to take her home. It was over a year before Kathy fully recovered. Well, to about 98% of her former self. Today, now 13 years later, she is as beautiful as ever and going strong as ever for her God. And if you ever asked her about those six weeks in 2010 and the many months that followed, she wouldn't talk much about the suffering. She would tell you about her resting in her Heavenly Father's shelter. She told me again yesterday, as she often has, that a few days into her stay at the hospital, still struggling with paralysis and breathing, she had the most wonderful experience of her 
lifetime. Quoting Kathy now, I'll never forget that morning lying there all alone, when all of a sudden my entire room began to glow. I was suddenly completely overwhelmed with the real and actual presence of God. It felt as though He literally came into my room, and as He did, He issued forth a peaceful balm, a warm, liquid love, which He poured all over me and into me. That's the only way I know how to explain it. I don't know how long it went on, but I was completely enveloped in a light gold liquid love. A liquid love which gave me a physical and emotional comfort that goes beyond description. And as it was happening and when it was over, these were the joyful words that filled my mind. I will never, ever fear death. After Kathy finished describing her wonderful experience of that morning to me, Something caught her eye just off to the right and behind me. Then she asked this question, and I quote, Honey, who's that man sitting in the leather chair? I'll stop right there a moment. There are a few more specific verses in Psalm 91 that I was saving for last, verses 9 through 11, where King David declares this promise. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High, your shelter. No evil will conquer you, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. Honey, I responded, what man? That man, she said, that man sitting there in the chair. I turned to see nothing, but I wasn't meant to see him. Oh, my word, I said to myself, Kathy is seeing an angel. I absolutely know in my spirit that my wife was looking at an angel, and her loving Father in heaven wanted her to know that he had sent that angel to protect her. Dear friend, I'm going to conclude today with this. Please grab onto this and hold onto this. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Trust Him. I urge you to declare that you trust Him, because there in a shelter, no evil will conquer you, and He will order His angels to protect you. He will rescue you, and He will reward you, because He loves you so much. Dear Father, how can we ever thank you enough. There's no way we can thank you enough. Bless my dear friend, your dear one here today, with tears of joy and with a comfort that goes beyond description. Let it be. Thank you for listening to another episode of In Moments Like These with David Graham. And we hope that this podcast and this episode can be another tool and resource to help you in this walk of faith. If this podcast has made a difference in your life, we would love to hear from you. Visit us online at inmomentslikethese.com. That's inmomentslikethese.com.